Hi everyone, my name is Ashwin Iyer. I'm a professor here in the Electrical Computer Engineering Department of the University of Alberta. Welcome to the eSurf facility. This is the Electrical and Computer Engineering Research Facility. You're in my lab now, where we design next generation high frequency circuits, next generation wireless communication devices, and where we develop a technology known as metamaterials technology. Metamaterials are engineered periodic structures that work at microwave and millimeter wave frequencies and other frequencies, but which are designed to exhibit properties that you don't find in nature. And if we make devices out of these metamaterials, then these devices have exotic properties that help them to perform better. This is a relatively new lab. What we have here in front of me is our shielded anechoic chamber where we test antennas. Right now we're inside our shielded anechoic chamber. The purpose of this chamber is to measure antenna radiation patterns. A radiation pattern describes how an antenna either transmits or receives energy as a function of angle, as a function of position. To know this, we have to put our antenna on a device like this, which is a positioner, that will rotate the antenna, and then we have a probe that samples the transmitted energy from that antenna so that we can ultimately determine how the antenna distributes its radiated energy in different directions. Now, this is a near-field chamber, which gives us additional degrees of freedom in doing this measurement. For example, this probe can actually rotate uh, in order to, de to determine properties known as polarization. It can actually scan up, down, and left and right over a five foot by five foot area. This entire uh, setup here will rotate around this way, but also move back and forth. In fact, we have between six and eight degrees of freedom in motion here to do a huge variety of measurements. And that's what makes this antenna chamber very unique at the University of Alberta. The purpose of these absorbers here is to ensure that when I do a transmission from my antenna under test to the probe, the signal goes directly from here to there rather than bouncing off the walls. These absorbers absorb the echoes of electromagnetic waves, and that's why we call the chamber anechoic. Furthermore, we want to make sure that nothing, no interfering signal gets in from the outside, and that's why these absorbers are lining a large metal box. Hope you enjoyed this tour of our shielded anechoic chamber. This is where we develop our next generation high frequency wireless devices and antennas. Welcome to the Nano Characterization Lab, Nano Characterization Lab here at the University of Alberta. Uh, what we do here is actually we teach students how to understand properties of material and how they fit together and make electronic devices and other devices uh, in, in different ways. We have an array of measurement equipment uh, that we have at our disposal. Uh, this is used for a number of undergraduate classes and graduate classes. Uh, and if you come to the U of A as a graduate student, you can take this class and, 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 and use some of this equipment uh, during that time. So what we have here is just uh, to start off, we have a microscope, simple microscope. Then we have an electron microscope. And while this electron microscope that we have here, uh, one thing, we have much better electron microscopes that we use for more research applications downstairs. Here we have a spectrophotometer. Uh, this actually gets used for research and for our education purposes because it's that good. And, that's, and all of these things, if you take uh, some of these introductory classes, you're going to use that the first day of lab. Um, here you have different ways of measuring uh, thin film systems. You measure the thickness of different films. And we have a way to measure the resistivity the hardness, the thickness by taking a uh, profile, an actual physical method of measuring thickness. And over here we have an ellipsometer, which is a heavily used research tool because this can measure films that are as thin as two to, to three nanometers in thickness, and even smaller. And so this is actually used heavily as a research tool, and it's used heavily in our, uh, our education lab. I'm Dr. Roger Zemp, um, uh, and this is my lab. Um, we work on um, a lot of different projects, mostly related to uh, biomedical technologies. Um, over here we have uh, a new type of uh, imaging system that uses uh, laser light to uh, look at structures in the body. Um, most types of microscopes 
look at how light is reflected from the body. Uh, this new type of imaging system um, looks at uh, the optical absorption of light and it, uh, it uses a new kind of uh, sensing technology um, to look at absorbing structures uh, even fairly deep into tissue with cellular resolution. And we can see, uh, for example, blood vessel networks. Um, we can see uh, even single cells. Um, we can visualize blood oxygenation and even gene expression with some of these systems. Hi, my name is Ben, and this is Chris. And we work on the ultrasound uh, imaging sort of side of our lab. So what we work with is we work with these custom sensors that we designed in the NanoFab. So on this chip, we actually have over 40,000 small capacitive membranes, so tiny little drums that we use to send and receive ultrasound signals. So after we fabricate these downstairs in the facilities here, we actually bring them into our lab and hook them up to some of the custom electronics that we've built to both power and operate these sensors. So what we have here is we have one of our sensors hooked up to three different uh, circuit boards that both um, interface, control, and power our system. And by working with these, we can power them and we can actually look at our samples and look at various samples in immersion and measure the results here to see the performance of the sensors as well as comparing them to some of the things we see that are already readily available in industry. So what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to leverage nanotechnology and leverage small sensors to try and produce uh, better working sensors with higher resolution and it might help image people better. Hi, my name is Jeff Fink and this is the Applied Nonlinear and Control Lab. Uh, this lab was founded in 2001 by Professor Alan Lynch. Um, the Nonlinear Control Lab, um, uh, what we do in this lab is we apply nonlinear control theory to a wide uh, variety of electrical mechanical systems including power converters and mobile robots. Uh, Nonlinear control is the theory of um, prediction and influence of systems uh, that are described by a nonlinear mathematical model. Uh, this model can include many different things. Uh, for example, with a quad rotor. The quad rotor is a relatively simple robot. It has just four different inputs, one for each of the propellers. And even this dynamics is a nonlinear model um, because of the way it depends on its different states. Uh, its states are in its position, its velocity, its angular velocity, and its attitude. can fly completely autonomously, so I don't have to have my hands anywhere on the controller. They're just here for safety. And I can also control it manually to make it go to the left or to the right and back up.